Welcome to Revival Cycles Tech Talk. I'm Stefan, and today we are going to try and destroy an M unit. All right, welcome back to Tech Talk. And as we said, we're going to see if we can destroy this M unit. But first, we wanted to cover a few of the troubleshooting techniques and debugging uh, methods that you can use when you're doing your installation. So we've started with this kind of half-ass setup. Um, it's really very similar to the one that we did in the last M unit video. But uh, if you want to see how that went, you can see it. But I don't really want to cover this mess of wires down here. Just trust me, this has been connected correctly and you can see the way that it goes in the manual. Um, for now, just realize that we've got a few components here. There are two buttons. One controls the headlight, the other controls the horn. We have a tail light, we have a headlight, there's the M unit, and we're going to use a power supply this time instead of a battery. And the reason for that is we'll be able to actually change the voltage uh, that's being applied to the M unit, and that way we can simulate what would happen if your voltage regulator were to fail. Oh yeah, we also have a horn, because that's what the horn button controls. So. That's here. It's in this rag so that it's not super loud because I don't want to hear it and I bet you probably don't either. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is actually turn on our power supply. And you notice we've got a couple of readouts here. I'm going to lean over so I can see what they are and tell you what they are. Uh, over here we've got voltage. Uh, right now we're set to 13.2. That's uh, pretty typical or reasonable for most motorcycles. Sometimes you'll see them up into the 14s and other times yeah, down towards 12, but you don't want them that low. Uh, over here, this is uh, the amperage, and these are uh, directly related. So you, right now, since we're not using any power, there is no amperage flowing, but this power supply is capable of supplying five amps. So we'll see this gauge start to read a little bit more after we get going. So turn it on. Uh, we've got this janky little alligator clip that we're going to connect to the lock input. And when we do that, you see that the, the lights will race around the outside and then it'll stop with the lock input lit and the auxiliary output lit. And now if we look over here, we are consuming 0 0.04 amps. That's pretty typical for this on condition and since we don't have anything connected to the auxiliary output, that's just the steady state kind of, uh, just the steady state draw that the M unit has. So we can turn a couple things on. We'll start with the headlight. So we can do that. We see we've got a tail light, we've got a headlight, and we've even got a brake light. So the M unit right now is in a normal operating condition. The first thing I want to show you as far as a troubleshooting uh, technique is something that a lot of people misunderstand uh, and misconstrue as a problem, but it's actually a feature of the M unit, and that's called the parking light. Now, what happens is a lot of people will finish their, their installation and they get everything done, they feel great, they go, to go for their first ride, they come back, shut the bike off, and well, the headlight and the taillight just stay on kind of dimly, and you're really confused at why this is happening, and it doesn't make any sense, and it's really annoying. Um, but the reason that happens is because it's actually activated the parking light feature. The way that works, if you hold the headlight button while turning the M unit off. Now the M unit is off. You can see that there are no lights on the M unit. It is turned off, but we still have a dim headlight and we have a dim tail light. That way, if you are parked on the side of the road, traffic could still see you or something like that. Really, I think it's a regulatory requirement that Moto Gadget included in the M unit. Ultimately, it's just a nuisance and really causes more problems than it solves. So to deactivate the parking light, you just turn it back on and turn it back off. No big deal and that eliminates the parking light. So we do have this horn connected. You can hear that right there. And let's get our headlights going again. So another thing that can happen with the M unit is um, when you have a voltage regulator that fails, sometimes it doesn't regulate the voltage, its entire purpose in life. And that means the voltage can become too high. And that's the one kind of Achilles heel of the, of the M unit. Uh, they're, they're relatively impervious to uh, reverse polarity, as I'll just demonstrate right now. I'll take and disconnect these and connect them deliberately backwards. So we're going to go black to red and red to black. And it doesn't, it doesn't like that at all. It's going to honk the horn so it can dissipate some of the power and let you know that you are not doing it right. So if your horn starts to go off as soon as you connect your battery, it's probably because you're connecting it reverse polarity. So it doesn't mind being connected with reverse polarity and it's already got the built-in circuit protection that will shut down all the outputs and the inputs if there's too much current flowing through them. 
but what happens if you end up with too much voltage? That's the one thing that really can effectively kill the M unit. And there's even a little uh, detent, um, I, th I think it's just a small little uh, sensor that once it does receive too much voltage and bypasses its uh, safety protections, it'll pop up and it will void your warranty and you don't want that to happen. But before you get to that point, it will give you a fair warning. And we're gonna simulate that right now by turning up the voltage. The M unit should be fine to handle any voltages up to you know, 15, 16 amps. Uh, but once it gets much above 18 amps, it's gonna turn the horn on. As we start to climb up above 18 amps, there it is. Now I'm caref carefully trying to tune this so that we can have the horn and it won't override me talking to you. So you can hear the horn kind of being unhappy over here. And that's because the M unit is trying to dissipate the additional voltage. What all this means is if you're riding your bike and your horn starts going off and you're not pushing the button, you need to stop now. It is indicating that you have too much voltage coming from your charging system, you're at risk of damaging your battery, you're at risk of damaging your M unit, and you need to just stop the bike, go find a pickup truck, go home, replace your voltage regulator, and then continue on from there. So one of the other really helpful things with uh, the M unit is that it's got all these LEDs on the top and you can use those when you're trying to figure out why it isn't working exactly the way you expect. Uh, very often we'll find that someone will finish their installation, fire up the bike, and then it will behave um, abnormally in, in a way that they don't really like. And the first thing you want to do is look at what the LEDs are doing. And then if that doesn't make it clear to you, start in a very systematic way and disconnect your outputs. So even though I can disconnect this headlight, and it's really easy to do, you just disconnect the headlight, I can still see what's actually happening there because I can see the input, I can see that the output's changing, and it's doing exactly what I've got it programmed to do. And that way you can test without having to worry about having a short circuit on the output and it just makes it a little bit simpler to identify what's actually going on. So one of the other things that I wanted to show you guys is what happens when you do have a short circuit. We have demonstrated this in the past, but let's cover it one more time because it's just fun for me. Um, in order to do that, this power supply, like we said, it only can supply uh, five amps. Right now we're drawing 0.1. Uh, when we do give a direct short on the auxiliary output, which is what I'm about to do, it will draw 16 amps, which is way more than five. So this guy can't cut it. We're gonna switch over to using our usual anti-gravity four cell battery for this demonstration. No big deal. Just disconnect, connect the negative to negative and positive to positive, and we're back in business. So I've got this wire that is connected to the auxiliary output, and if I create a direct short to the battery negative, it will cause the auxiliary output to draw more than 16 amps, and it will automatically shut down without damaging anything in our system, without lighting the wire on fire, or anything like that. So it's kind of fun to watch. Here we go, small spark, and there you go it starts flashing. So if any of your outputs on your M unit start to flash, it's an indication that they have a direct short to ground or they're consuming too much power and you'll wanna isolate and identify why that circuit has an issue. Trace back through your wiring, check for any rubs at the frame, look for um, what devices you have connected. If you have a whole bunch of stuff like a heated vest and heated grips and a million different turn signals and like 15 auxiliary driving lights and a bunch of headlights, you could overpower the auxiliary output. Um, normally that's not the case. Usually you're gonna find that it's just something that's been shorted to ground. So start with that, check through all your connections, check through the wires. And ultimately that's kind of the big stuff that I wanted to cover on this uh, demonstration. Um, last thing would be, how does this actually reset? It's really simple. If, you, um, if we had a starter button, if we push the starter button, it would cause that to reset, but we can also just turn it off, turn it on, back in business. All right, so that is pretty much everything we wanted to cover in this demonstration. And although we started out with the goal of destroying an M unit, as you can see, we were not successful in that objective. Our M unit is still working perfectly normal, even though we supplied it with too much voltage, direct short circuits, reverse polarity, uh, hooking it up in a very haphazard and um, half-ass way. But you know what? It keeps ticking. These things are really very bulletproof. They're quite reliable. Um, they really are tolerant of um, 
what would we call them? Maybe learning mistakes or kind of trial and error experimentation. So even if you've never wired a bike before, this should be the place where you start. This is so much easier than any other system. This is a much better uh, methodology for wiring a bike and distributing power on the bike. Um, there really isn't anything else on the market that is as um, robust and simple and easy to use as this. This device literally goes on every single custom bike that we build here at Revival Cycles because it is actually cheaper for us to buy this component and install it on the bike because it saves us so much time and labor. I cannot recommend this highly enough. At the moment, this is far and away the best piece of kit you can put on your bike. So you can get your M unit at RevivalCycles.com and while you're there, you can check out a lot of other great products that we offer. Now, the products that we offer on our site are selected specifically because we've used them on the bikes that we build. All the customs that we work on, it's an opportunity for us to test and evaluate which of these devices really work the way they're advertised, which ones are just full of shit. And the M unit clearly is one that really lives up to its full billing. And even if you don't believe me about how great the M unit is, Check out the reviews on our website. There are plenty of reviews that explain from independent, verified buyers exactly how good this thing is. We've got nothing to hide, and honestly, I can't recommend this product enough. Because we use all these products on our bikes and on our builds, we know exactly how they work. And that means if you run into trouble on your application, you can send us an email to techsupport at revivalcycles.com or give us a phone call. And we're always here to help you get your build back on the road. And with that, thanks for watching.